Hello everybody, John here and today on To The Garage we're starting our winter project on Ruby which is to replace our oven with a microwave. Myself and Joe have owned Ruby the Rapido for um, a couple of years now and what we're recognising is we barely have used the oven. It's not something we would typically need when we're out and about, style of cooking and things, most things we do on a hob. But occasionally it'd be really nice to have a microwave. So our plan is to remove the oven, keep it, because maybe future owners, but use the space where the oven is to build an enclosure that's appropriate for a microwave. And that's going to have a few challenges. We've got to remove this. We've got to leave the fridge intact and looking good and working. We have to cap off the gas supply that goes to this. We're going to have to put a 240 volt supply behind it. The microwave will have to be removable, but mounted in such a way it can't move. I want the whole thing to look original. That doesn't put me off. It'll be interesting to do. Removing the oven will mean that we're slightly less self-sufficient off-grid. But when we're using this vehicle, we're typically on motorhome and caravan club sites, uh, electric hookup. Also, it's a small eye-level oven. Uh, it takes a long while to heat up. It's not very efficient. It's not great use of our gas supply. So for all those reasons, it's coming out. Now, empty the oven out, we keep a few things in here, which again tells you something about our usage. And this is where this is going to get quite interesting because we have a series of screws holding it to the frame here. But the control for the oven is on the bottom part, which is also the fridge. So there might be a little bit of a game to get this out, but we're going to give it a go. It's looking for anything hidden. Tucked away. It's moving as one. If you pull the knobs off this, Finally, you've got two long shafts and one short. The long shaft ones in the base that way there is a screw. The short there's one screw going up. So let's free them off. I remember these whoops, from when I got rid of the terrible Dometic fridge latch and made my own. Yay! I've now exposed two more screws that are holding the oven onto the top of the fridge. I'm going to slacken them two off and just see if this seems to move independently before we deal with the gas connections around the back. Mission one. Like a lot of people, we keep our van hooked up to the mains, charging the batteries and so that the interior doesn't get too cold, we keep the heating on its lowest setting. So it'll kick in if the temperature inside goes below zero. So make sure you disconnect your supply. And then next, let's shut down our gas. And for good measure, go down here. There's our fridge and hot water gas 
taps. So this one with the snowflake on is for the fridge. He's shut. Next thing I want to do is just take the grill off at the top there. So just give a little quarter turn to those clips. Pull out on one side, give it a wiggle, and out it comes. And there is the gas hookup to our oven. Now we'll come down here and do this bottom one, because why not? There we go. And we're out. And that needs a good tidy up as well. Or a soot and flaky paint. Looks like this is the T junction where we've got supply gas and then it branches off into the fridge and this way to go up to the oven. Once you've got the control panel off, there is just one screw in that hole, holding it to that bracket just there. And then you can manoeuvre the whole control panel forward. And you just have to disconnect that earth lead there to give you a little more clearance. That's that one. off okay so I've decided that there's too much going on up here for me to really understand how to remove the top without doing damage so I'm going to remove the whole of the what's called tech tower fridge freezer oven um, so that's all going to come out to finish that off what I need to do is open the fridge door get this out of the way take my pickle out and there are screws underneath these covers that just secure it to the woodwork around four of them so I'll remove them and then we'll slide the whole thing forward. Well, we've reached this stage. Hey! So, success. Managed to split the tech tower, removing the oven from the top. Couldn't really film doing that because it turned into a bit of an epic task. My brother involved, we were dragging the fridge out, we we're in our own way, let alone trying to film anything. And trying to discover how to do it as we went but i can explain for everybody else how it works <clears throat> so we achieved the split by taking the whole thing out and doing it outside of the furniture uh, first thing to note is you can bring it out and put it in this position in our van the rapido but it's a very tight fit if you want to squeeze the whole unit through here we ended up having to take the front doors off the fridge to get it through this gap and then even with it over here it wouldn't go out through the door 
unless you did some more disassembly and stripping down I just wasn't prepared to do so we ended up stripping it just here the good news although we didn't achieve it is that at least theoretically you can remove the oven from the fridge freezer whilst it's all in place and that's achieved by releasing the two screws that are on the front of these plastic rails and I'll show you those on the oven as well and as you can see they are a kind of runner and there's a, a lug that's inside dropped into here that slides along the top on the oven but in order to actually pull the whole unit out you'll have to remove this bit which is the electronic controller a couple of screws at the front very easy to see and undo the two screws here which connect the gas control to the top of the fridge and position those so that they'll come around this and it will mean bending the copper pipes a little bit so not ideal um, there's earth leads just strapped to the top of the uh, fridge you can see those once this is out of the way rather easily just pull them off their spade terminals and there are some wires going to the back of the oven which you'll have to disconnect from the back through the grill on the outside of the van would enable the spark ignition system with all of those disconnected and a fair wind you should be able to draw the oven forward and then with a lot of wriggling get it to jump up at the back and essentially unhook from its runners and then get out through this hole now although i've made that sound relatively easy it is a real faff and a struggle because you're working through this little gap here um, very frustrating you can't really remove this without first removing the oven so i would actually say it's far easier to remove the whole unit and removing that is just about removing this plastic bung that plastic bung two more on the opposite side and behind those you'll find some phillips headed screws that just screw into the woodwork through the wall of the cabinet once they're disconnected as long as you've got the gas pipe connected at the back you'll be able to push the whole thing forward a little way and if you disconnect the wiring which is all on um, sockets and plugs anyway then you can slide the whole thing out uh, with the help of a friend it's heavier than it looks the main weight is actually that oven and it's top heavy so yeah get help this is where the gas pipe went through a 90 degree um, bend or junction and then into the back of the oven so critically important that this is properly blanked off to keep things safe yes it's in an outdoor vented area but gas falls it's going to fall down and yeah it should spill out of there but you've got a naked flame it's really important you get this capped off so this is the elbow that came off with the oven so the pipe goes in there and it went straight into the back of the oven I'm going to refit this so that it's there in case anything's ever reinstated I've got some 8 mil copper pipe and a couple of unions and olives and I'm just going to make a straight extension please with a blanked end to blank the whole thing off and leave it ready to receive an oven in future it's actually copper 8 mil fuel line not commonly used anymore copper pipes for fuel line but I've got some in my garage from my kit car days there you go. just using a drill bit to deburr it just give myself a couple of inches if we've never done uh, pipe cutting before this is just a tube cutter very much the same as a plumber would have it's just smaller because it's on automotive lines small diameter typically 
and you want to spin all the way around in confined spaces. You just tighten it till it touches. There's one cutting wheel and two rollers. Spin it round twice and then turn the wheel about an eighth of a turn just till you feel resistance basically. Don't try and squeeze through the pipe and spin it and it scores its way through the pipe and leaves a very neat finish. Like so. So I've got a blind end cap here. Let's go a nut, an olive and the cap. So there's that end cap. And there we are. So that's that end termination. That is going to be screwed back on to the pipe work. So this is our microwave. We purchased this from Magnum Motorhomes. It's a Dometic MWO microwave oven 240 UK. And it is a motorhome caravan specific microwave. What does that mean and why have we chosen this? Well, the first thing is, is dimensions. So, more, an awful lot of microwave ovens, they can look quite compact, but the killer feature for a motor caravan or caravan is the depth. And this one doesn't have too much bulgy stuff hanging out the back. It's about 34 centimeters front to rear. That's allowing for the bulge on the back. Width is 44 centimeters. And then we've got height, which is where I've got to say it's a little deceiving. The height of the microwave oven fascia is 24 centimeters. It has quite tall rubber feet and a good bulge underneath. So your overall height, including those feet is 28 centimeters. Can't remember, but I think these are advertised as 27. And believe it or not, that's uh, all quite relevant with the gap we've got up there. I can make the hole as tall as I like by cutting the panel at the top, but I don't really want to. I want to keep a lot of the van as original as possible and be able to reverse anything where I do to it. So the extra height is actually slightly problematical, but we will get around it. So that's the number one thing that makes a microwave suitable or not for a motor caravan is dimensions. So it's smaller. Second is the power. This is a 700 watt microwave. And yes, I'm sure it will peak higher than that. But an awful lot of microwaves these days are a thousand watts of cooking power range. And that makes them less useful for motor caravans because of the hookups we're going to use. Can't speak for anywhere else in the world, but in the UK, we tend to have uh, at least a six amp hookup uh, on 240. 10 is very common. 16 is common if you go to things like motor caravan and, camp and caravan club sites. Watts is voltage times by ampage. So if you've got a 10 amp hookup that you're connected to and your van is all equipped for a 10 amp hookup, that's in the middle of the range, then it will cope with a draw in the UK of 2,400 watts. So if you've got a 1,000 watt microwave and then you've got the added draw of some bits and pieces in the van you're charging, including your own batteries, and then you've got a fridge that's running, and then you've got a central heating system, water heating system, you can get up there quite quickly and somebody adds an extra thing and click, everything goes off. 
700 watts like this is not really going to worry it too much. So lower wattage is good. And, you know, you shouldn't be in that much of a hurry, but you desperately need a super, super fast microwave in a camper van or motorhome. Third thing that helps it be motor caravan useful is no moving parts. Most microwaves will have a rotating glass plate turntable of some variety. It's going to get broken. It's going to rattle around or you've got to keep taking it out and put it back in and storing it. This has got a non-moving ceramic plate in the base specifically for that reason. While we're looking at interior space, uh, I know a lot of you will be interested. I'll give you two sets of dimensions here. The ceramic plate is 23 centimeters square. The cavity inside the oven is rather better than that because it's got these depressions and bulges. And I would say that anything up to 30 wide will go easily in there and a depth of 30 will go in there. So you've got a 30 square and a height of 17 centimeters. So reasonably capacious given it's not a huge cabinet. And the last thing I want to share that means that it's good for motor caravans is an awful lot of microwave ovens have just a friction catch of some variety. So you push and you pull. And this has a locking system which actually latches. So unless you press this button, these levers are not going to come unlatched, meaning the door is not going to fly open when you go around a bend. Because we live in Lincolnshire, we can go over to Grimsby to Magnum Motor Homes, which are really, really good on prices. They stock all the parts and accessories that you would need to build your own um, motorhome, camper van, call it what you like, or make mods or conversions to a caravan or motor caravan. And their price is very keen. We got this for, I believe, £189. So it's a little expensive by microwave standards. You went to your local domestic uh, supplier, your Curry's, for instance. I'm sure you get a microwave of this physical size and power for sub £100, maybe, for a low brand, no brand. I don't, I'm not absolutely sure. Um, but if you want something that's got the features I'm describing, it is quite tricksy. Plus, we've got the Dometic name, which are well known for making motor caravan specific and caravan specific devices. So I'm quite pleased with the price for what it is, though they are expensive compared to general run of the mill domestic microwaves. Now, how are we going to get this to go in here? Well, as it stands, the gap between here and here is too small for the microwave with the rubber feet on. Now the rubber feet can be removed, but there's some lumps and bumps and bulges in the bottom anyway. So it's gonna be very tight. Um, it also means I can't stand it on top of a shelf in here because it's gonna be too high as well. So the current plan is I'm gonna make a shelf that fits on these plastic brackets that the original oven was fitted on and then cut holes in it that the rubber feet for the microwave are going to sit inside, thus locating it, and cut away the rest of the shelf to allow good ventilation. I made myself a paper template, which in my case is 53 wide by 25 deep, and that is the right width and the shallowest depth that will accommodate the feet on the microwave. And I'm going to place the microwave on top of this to see where the feet sit and get myself a template before I start making things in wood. And here's my template. So that whole hatched area in the middle is going to be cut away to allow for ventilation and a bulge. And these are where the feet are. I'm going to drill the smallest diameter so that there's a sort of conical contact with the feet. That's what the bottom of the oven looks like. So, got these conical rubber feet. They do unscrew. So, I'll be able to take them off, play around with them. We've got this bulge in the middle. 
You've also got quite a lot of vents. So I'm going round them all. After much tweaking, this is the final evolved design of the platform that the microwave is going to sit on. So it's got a metal bar at the front just to give it a bit of stiffness. It's got two wooden legs at the front to give it extra support. And these stops at the front which will stop it sliding back any further than it needs to. And also gives me something to screw through to lock it off. The feet essentially clamp by tightening them up and they grow into the holes and in the cabinet got two blocks at the back which give extra support as well as the sides for height so that all sits in there like that So I hope you can see what's gone on. So it slid in on top of some supports at the side, but it's also sitting on legs here and here. It's got a stop here that hits a plastic block. That can be screwed to the plastic block. I've got a decent gap down the sides for clearance. I've got a small gap at the top. Gives me plenty of clearance for the door. I've got a big airspace underneath. All this can be reassembled in front of the microwave. So I've just got some finishing off to do around the edges, but essentially it's now in place. Well, here's my finished solution and I'm very pleased. So after mounting the microwave in the way that you've already seen, the additional activities were a piece of maple finished uh, wood. This came from Magnum Motor Homes. Uh, they supply the shelving material that I used on this little project. So same sort of stuff, very light. Um, I think it's 12 mil thick 
board. That has increased the thickness of this panel, tidied it all up, closed the gap down, but not completely. So in here, I know it's a little dark. I've got a gap here of just over 20 millimeters. And likewise on this side, just over 20 millimeters. It's fixed in place with a screw just here. And the back edge just goes back around six inches. I've got a strip of double sided foam tape that is obviously gonna catch and stop the thing from moving around. Same on this side. At the bottom, it's trapped and held in place by another panel. Same thing, pushed in flush. This isn't very deep. This is two inches deep and just covers up the top edge of the gray plastic and stops you seeing where that finishes off. It leaves a nice gap below the door. Uh, if I open the door, you can see better how that finishes just before the microwave. At the top, I've just got a little molding in place, which covers the raw edge of this panel. And that's held in place with glue and a couple of panel pins and goes above these panels. And remember, if you're going to do, do, if you're going to do a similar job, that when you open your microwave door, this gap here closes down. Not greatly, I've got to say, it's quite well designed, but you lose about eight mil. So not only should you have a gap, but you have to have a gap. It's basically at eye level, same as the other oven was, but the floor of this is lower. And generally, I think it's a lot easier to use and load. You don't have the shelves inside. There's no moving parts, nothing to rattle. And I've taken Ruby out on a road test and it makes no noises whatsoever. This little area lights up whenever you plug into the mains and to set it, all you do is you go clock. I know it's oscillating, that's just to do with camera settings. Um, once you've got that clock, press clock again and say it's one clock. Ten, that's the time, clock, and it says one ten. And you just start the microwave by telling it how powerful you want it to be, 100%. Express gives you 30, 60, or a minute and a half with presses, or you use these buttons to tell it how long to go for, and instant start, pause and cancel. Couldn't be easier, no rattles, nice ceramic plate at the bottom, smooth sides, easy to clean, and I think it looks a treat. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Uh, I haven't gone into excruciating detail because I didn't want anybody with a similar unit to try and follow everything down to the dimensions. It's not that sort of project. If you're gonna take this on, you're gonna be happy to adjust as you go, invent as you go, but I think my experience should show you all that it's eminently doable. And I think my next step in this area is to replace these chrome mirror black mirror effect plastic panels, which on mine are a little scuffed up and damaged um, with maple inserts to match the rest of the van. I think they're starting to look quite dated, but I think just a nice clean wooden look would be better. If you've enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up. See you soon. Bye.